I was attractive higher to a lot of sugar makers because of my sugar bush experience and the fact that I sugar. And I started working for a lot of the bigger sugar makers in Franklin County. Um, and I s continued to see things that um, impacted what I thought and how I manage other properties. Um, and a lot of those people, one of the prime, the unfortunate realities of it is someone will borrow money and buy this piece of land and they'll want to log it in the summer where it's the worst possible time uh, for basal damage because, and they want to get it done as quick as possible so they can hang tubing and tap that next year. That's still a problem that people have to deal with. Um, the other thing that you started to see um, was whole tree harvest in a sugar place. And I have seen some good whole tree harvest jobs in a sugar place, but I've seen some terrible ones. And um, one of the common things I see is on level ground, um, I, I think the impetus is to cut heavier and then you start to see dieback, um, lack of maple regeneration. Um, you also, depending on the operator, but one common thing that you'll see in whole tree harvest is wide roads, um, probably double the width, um, and islands of wood, islands of maple. Um, and it, it's, I still believe the best method is a cable harvest in a sugar place. Um, and I just think it's less impact. Um, so I think you can um, one of the harder conversations you have with landowners when they want to thin, I bought this property, let's thin it. And I want to set tubing up as soon as possible. Well, what about, can you wait a year? No, I can't. I have payments, I got to make them. I need to make as much, you know, as I can on this. What about, when do you want to start hanging tubing? I'll, tomorrow, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you got to work with, um, and these are people who are established sugar makers. Um, they also, they have the property already laid out in their mind. They know how they're going to hang tubing. Um, okay, we can get Jim to log it, um, and he'll start it in, as soon as he can. Um, but he'll do, he'll cut trees in half, so he'll minimize the damage to your, ba to your, to your residual stand. But he's not going to be able to pay you full stumpage like John might. And, and they have to think about that. And I encourage him to go see Jim's job and John's job. So, because that is what sells the quality of that work. Um, it's your property. You can do what you want. I'm telling you, I would go with Jim. But if you want more money from John, far be it for me. But you should go investigate that. And that has helped quite a bit. Yeah, you know, I, I think I will go with Jim. It's less money. But um, in, in August, the bark tightens. You see less damage, um, residual damage. But, and we've put up, um, we have put barriers around maples on, but that's time, time sensitive. But um, in, I think it that has helped people um, get a better job in their sugar places. The other reality is it's slower, and you may have to talk to. The, establish where do you want to set up tubing first? Do you want to go from the back forward? A lot of loggers like to work from the back forward, but maybe it makes more sense to work from the forward back. So 
that they can fall behind with their main lines and tubing or the left side of the property or the right side. You know, you come, it could be different for every landowner, but you kind of have to establish that. Um, so we've had some success in that realm. Um, a lot of landowners, because with the current use, you've got to go back every 10 years. Um, there are a few bigger, larger sugar makers I work for that now realize the benefit of a winter harvest. And they are planning on um, laying idle a piece of land to get that winter harvest. Um, 